Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome aboard today's flying kayak flight. Today we're going to do something new. We're going to fly the Piper J3 Cub from Dar es Salaam all the way to Zanzibar. For those of you who know my blog, you'll notice that this is the exact same flight that I portray in one of my short stories named Tundra. In this short story, a pilot flies from Dar es Salaam to Zanzibar in a Piper J3 Cub equipped with Tundra tires, such as the one you're seeing on screen right now, and he lands the aircraft on a sandbar in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Now, for today's flight, we're going to replicate that exact flight, and we're going to take a look at what inspired me to write that short story, and I'm going to give you some background information on the aircraft, and on the route, and of course on the scenery we were flying over. I hope you're going to enjoy this new format. Now, the Piper Cub that we're flying today is a Piper J3 Cub equipped with Tundra tires. The Piper Cub is actually one of the most produced piston aircraft, and it's one of the most famous general aviation airplanes in the world. In fact, there were so many of these aircraft at the time that if you were a pilot, you basically flew in a Piper Cub at some point. This is a really, really simple airplane. It's got a two-seater cockpit with one seat behind the other. For single pilot flights, the pilot would always sit in the back seat, as that was the only way you could reach an allowable weight distribution. And, well, the instruments, as you can see, aren't exactly the most modern or the most complex. All you've got is an airspeed indicator, an altimeter, a compass, a few engine instruments, and, well, your RPM meter. This rendition of the Piper Cub is the A2A Piper J3 Cub with AccuSim. A2A is a company that provides some excellent aircraft, especially general aviation airplanes, with an incredible simulation depth. In fact, they also provide so-called continuous modeling, which means that even whilst you're out of your simulator, the airplane continues to age. For example, if your airplane has battery, the battery drains over time, and water collects in the fuel tank, and other things happen with your airplane. You'll have to maintain your Piper Cub if you want to keep her flying safely. Now. The Piper J3 Cub is such a simple airplane that she didn't really have a lot of checklists. All you had to do was what I'm going to do in just a second. You'd more or less release the tie down and the control lock, and then you'd start by loading the airplane. For today's flight, we're only going to load a pilot, check that we have full oil and full fuel, and that the radio battery is charged. That's all we need to do. Now, in the next step, we're going to just turn on the fuel, we're going to give the engine a shot of primer. That means that we're pumping fuel into the engine at the moment, and we're going to turn the prop a few times, to be precise, 10 times, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, whoop, that happens sometimes, 9, 10. You'll hear the prop sound change actually because there's fuel in the cylinders now and that fuel is kind of squished together if you turn the prop around. Then we're going to go back to the virtual cockpit and we're going to turn on the ignition switch to both. We're going to check that the carpet is off and the fuel is on. We're going to go outside and give it a spin. Now the Piper Cup doesn't have an electrical starter. That means that you're going to have to start it by spinning the prop by hand. In the real world, you'd have two people to do that. One sitting in the airplane and standing on the brakes so it doesn't roll forward, and one person hand cropping it. In the simulator, however, well, I'm alone. So, I just had to hand prop it like that. Obviously, in the real world, you'd never hand prop an airplane alone unless you really, really had to. But, on that note, let me just quickly give you the disclaimer. I'm not a real world pilot, so don't use any of my videos for real world flight. I'm just doing this for entertainment purposes and to show you a bit about flight simulation and aviation in general. So as you can see here in Dar es Salaam, the weather is pretty good today. And we've started up our engine, which means we're pretty much ready for taxi. So you'll see me again once we're at the runway's edge. So although I said we were going to see us again once I'm at the runway holding point, I did decide to give you a quick sequence of this airplane taxi. The reason for that is that it's an incredibly interesting airplane to taxi. Unlike usual airplanes, which have a well, nose gear or a tail wheel that's connected to the rudder, 
this airplane has a tail wheel that is freely casted. That means that it can move freely and is not connected to the rudder pedals. In order to turn the airplane, I have to use two different features. Either I use differential braking, that means that I can brake the left and right wheel separately, and then I can just, well, steer by slowing down one of my wheels, or I give it quick jabs of the throttle, as you're seeing me doing right now, which increase the airflow over the rudder just enough for the rudder to be effective in turning the airplane around. And that's what I'm currently doing. Now if I had to make a more severe turn, I would just quickly add differential brakes and I'd be turning. So yeah, that actually makes this airplane very interesting to taxi. Now, another interesting feature about taxiing this airplane, or this particular Piper Cub, is that it has Tundra tires. Tundra tires are tires that have a low air pressure and are very large. They're mostly used to land off airport, in places like sandbars, or on gravelly strips, where you're going to need big tires that will, well, absorb the shocks. Now, the special thing about these tires is that they're obviously very squishy, so if you go into a turn, and you go in too fast, you might very well see the Piper Cub leaning over and rocking a bit, as she's doing right now. In fact, these tires also have... One, four. Oh, there I am the runway awareness system telling me I'm approaching the runway. Now, the interesting part is that these tires in the real world also have a considerable amount of drag. So what they do is they really slow you down, especially on landing if you're on a spout. So if you're on the tarmac, or, well, if you're on tarmac and you're landing the airplane, you'll feel the nose be forced down the moment your main wheels contact the ground. And there have actually been accidents attributed there have actually been accidents attributed to people not compensating for that nose down moment when tundra wheels touched the normal concrete runways of bigger airports. So that's an important thing to know. And we'll see that on takeoff and maybe even a bit on landing. So here we are at the runway holding point for runway 14 at Dar es Salaam. And we're about to take off. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my pre-takeoff checks, which are really simple on this airplane. I'm just going to check that my RPM is all good, my altimeter is set, and I'm going to quickly go through my magnetos. In order to do that, I'm going to increase my power all the way to 1500 RPM. in my right magneto and I'll see a significant drop the left magneto right and back to both now I'm going to open carb heat I'll notice a significant drop in RPM and I verified that carb heat is working my magnetos are working and my fuel is on so let's go ahead and let's take off the moment we leave the ground, you'll pretty much be able to see the Indian Ocean. And then, I'll just quickly show you where we're heading. And I'll tell you a bit more about how I got inspired to the story. And I'll tell you something about the flight, the route, and the islands we're flying to. So as this is a more steep turn, I'm now using differential braking. You can really see the airplane rocking. On runway, one, four. You can actually hear the tires in the background. Now, A2A has added a few views in here. So you can select the left side or the right side to lean over and see at where you're going. Now, I'm flying offline, so there's no ATC today. Which means that I can just firewall it and watch the airplane take off. Take note of how short the takeoff run will be. It's really going to be extremely short. And we're in the air. It was just a few seconds. In fact, the Piper Cub is one of those airplanes that can take off really, really quickly. He was built as an airplane that's used in bush services and as a trainer. So the Piper Cub 
Alright, the takeoff run you just saw was really, really short. The Piper JP Cup was actually built as a trainer during World War II. As such, it means that the Piper Cup has an incredibly short takeoff roll because it was built for an incredibly low stall speed. Unlike most other airplanes, the JP Cup can take off in under 100 meters, and almost all of the stole world records, stole meaning short takeoff and landing, are currently being held in Piper Cups. Although this airplane was built as a trainer just before World War II, she is still currently in use as a bush plane, as a training plane, and as a collector's plane, as Piper Cubs are really sought after, and especially flying ones. Many companies have provided real-world modern adaptations of the Piper JP Cub, specifically for more modern environments, and, well, because they wanted to retain those short takeoff and landing capabilities that you really won't find on any other airplane. As the Piper Cub in this original configuration isn't really a very well instrumented airplane, you're going to have to listen a lot to the sounds of the airflow around you, and other sounds. And you'll have to feel the stick pulling against your hand in order to determine how fast you're climbing, or how far you are away from stalling the airplane. As you can see, although we've just taken off, you can already see the ocean straight ahead. Dar es Salaam is a city that is on the shoreline of Tanzania. In fact, it's Tanzania's biggest city. Dar es Salaam International Airport is one of two international airports that can actually handle a 747-sized airplane in Tanzania, the other one being Kilimanjaro International Airport. Tanzania is also one of the main gateway hubs which allows entry into Africa and Tanzania especially. The three main airports of Tanzania, Kilimanjaro, Dar es Salaam, and Zanzibar, are frequently serviced by European airlines as well as African airlines, and provide service to a lot of parts of Eastern Africa. The Zanzibar Island chain consists of three islands, the main island of which we're flying towards right now. Now the Piper J3 Cub doesn't have an autopilot, so you'll have to hand fly her the entire time. She's got a small fuel tank, which is actually this structure you can see right under the instrument. Um, panel. This fuel tank holds about enough fuel for you to go an approximate 200 miles in this airplane. So really she's not exactly the best cross-country tour. In fact, she's got a cruising speed of around about 62 knots, which really isn't all that fast. We cruise it up to 65 miles per hour, which means you're going to be going low and slow. As you might have noticed, we've constantly been flying. We're at about 841 feet at the moment. The Piper Cub isn't a very fast climber, especially with the added weight of Tundra tires. She really takes a while to get up to altitude and speed. So, don't really expect too much. However, she's a great airplane to practice things like coordination, flying skills. If you're really skilled, you could even use a Piper Cub with its 65 horsepower engine as an aerobatics aircraft. That's pretty crazy. Sadly, there's fairly little add-on scenery for the African area. In fact, the only add-on scenery that I found that was really high quality was the Kilimanjaro Airport. If you know of any other high quality add-on scenery other than Kilimanjaro by Aerosoft, for the East African area, let me know in the comments below. 